This is George F551, and we are doing part three of the Bowling Alley Project in the basement. This is where I hope that things come to an end. It's much further along than it looks. Finally got a structural wall there. Need to do it over there. However, the cold weather is coming, and the basement gets pretty cold. So... Still going to at least structurize, that's a word now, the other side, at least here on the front end. And the pit and all that will have to wait because, as I said, the basement gets very cold. So if we're going to do finish work in the painting and what have not, need to, like I said, frame up the very front part. And do the walls. That includes ripping stuff off here, ripping off this, this board. I'm not sure if we have any wiggle room to move it over to the right a little bit. It, you know, it probably may or may not need to. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Very not sure. I might, might put a furring strip in there to pad out this unnecessarily large gap there and there. So, anyway, I have... Anyway, I'm, I just have this here because I was hoping maybe when I get the some of the furring strips up, we can start putting things in. And this is going to be the main wall. It's cabinet grade plywood. And that'll be painted. I don't have the paint downstairs, but I, and I have the color. And then the quote unquote wainscoting version part of the wall is going to be this stuff vertically though like that so what's going to happen is based on the height of that bottom opening is where the wainscot is going to go across and all around and I have a level that hopefully will get it fairly close I'm gonna see if I can make it make it work. I got a level that does right angles, laser level. See if it works out. And this wall is gonna be eight feet. It's gonna stick out foot, foot and a half that way, and the remainder this way. And there'll be enough room to to make a door, and ultimately, a different project is make this storage. We've kept some of this siding. I hear noises. Anyway, yeah, this place has been... I have found evidence of uh, chipmunks invading this. And I've plugged up quite a few holes. There still may be some that have to be plugged up. Anyway, I'm going to clean this up at some point. And... Get off all the moss. Yeah, that's moss from wooden stuff that laid there when this was, this basement was very neglected. There's a lot of dust because it's dark in here. Yeah, there's definitely something. I think maybe up there. Like I said, I, there's still holes I need to plug outside. As well as in here. So we got all this lumber. These four pieces are for the easy eight foot section of gutter. Might install it, might might not right away. You know, just to get it out of the way. 
got the lights there again I'm thinking I'm waiting till I can get this whole thing structured up make a door not sure where the walls gonna wind up but if I were gonna go parallel from wherever this wall ultimately winds up it's gonna be kind of in between there so that's gonna be kind of interesting I'm thinking is it that full section will exist it's just part of it will be this design and the other it's just I don't know it's just a basement project so all this is gonna wait we need to do this and structuralize this and get all the pretty stuff done so that when it gets cold we're able to uh, concentrate on this. It's much easier to heat a small space like this than a larger one. So that's where we're at right now. And first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually build the structure for this side of the wall. And, and then we go from there. There's definitely a lot more there now. And the top brace is indeed level. And the bottom, it just doesn't look it because of all the light and dark. But I believe that is pretty close to level. If not, whatever. Trim pieces will we'll correct that issue anyway. Let's just... See where it lands. It's pretty close. It's not perfect. I guess the final final pieces will de dictate that. And I'm tripping over a new box of screws because that's how things work. Anyway, here's the light. It decides to turn on this time. Usually it doesn't like to. So we got the firewall there, and we got the wall that clears the ductwork there. Not exactly sure how I'm going to go about. Actually, I do have an idea on how I'm going to go about um, setting the height of the ceiling so nothing flies and hits the ductwork. Anyway. This is what we have that and that's as far as the wall protrudes there and then the remaining eight feet plus that will be the uh, doorway to the you know, to the back area and here's the other wall that was built and like I said we're we're skipping the pit area for now because the colder weather is coming now you gotta get all the nice fancy stuff done so we need to these specific 2x4s that are here are going to be fur strips I ran out of time for today, not gonna be able to do it anyway build the remaining wall to make 8 feet here, watch how absolutely nothing will line up here so I kicked this out till it does pretty much line up with everything so it'll be a little easier to put stuff together I mean it's you know I'm gonna attach here there there and whatever piece of pieces I think it'll be I don't know it's in the work and I don't think we'll need anything there we'll just cut to fit pretty much just going by that duct so yeah that's all we have right now and like I said it's easier to heat a small space so it can stain than a large space and paint and do all this so that's what we got right now and be back a little later with more well, I 
took off work today because new roof was being installed and not the best convenient time but eh whatever so anyway in terms of the bowling alley project like I said I want to try to get the finished stuff and we've done quite a bit I got the strapping up and the strapping on top of the strapping although I made a Calculation error, what a surprise. See, I thought that the strapping that I bought was a half inch. It's three quarters. So, we have this. Two inches. And on average, two and a half. More or less. Maybe a little less there. Yeah, me goofed, but as always, I have a plan. I'm still gonna put the I'm still gonna put the insulation up against the wall, minus where it drops back. But I'll add some uh, from the, what I cut off here, more or less, unless I could find half-inch material. And just add little two by fours, half inch strips on top of the insulation, and there you go. Plus, it's better on the wall and not on the uh, on the concrete wall and not on the finish wall, so the finish wall can breathe a little bit. I could be wrong. Anyway, I was thinking of dry locking these but with all the gaps that exist is the irregularity of the walls there's just so many gaps that it's just impossible so just gonna leave it as it is and where the walls are not as bulged out put trim stock in to hold it nice and tight and when I was hammering some of these flat because some of these are warped they came off the uh, yeah the all-purpose construction adhesive didn't hold but for one it wasn't even eight hours of cure time and two the B three things two the beads in the middle were still wet. And three, well, <laughs> I also put the beads primarily where the dry lock is and not where the bare block was. So I mean, we got better and I said they're wedged in and if they fell short, put wedges so that they are wedged in. You can see this one was kind of a bit difficult wedge there so what I'm also gonna do is when I build the final wall so to speak which will go you know kind of up to here where the strapping is what I'm also going to do this was gonna be rail but I decided to buy more of this and do that instead is when the rails are put up that this is going to be nailed to the joist above and that'll hold the wall in so it will not fall down if it comes loose and of course the bottoms are gonna be I still have them around in fact they're being used to weigh down this where's the light uh, right there. These pressure treated 2x6s will be the uh, baseboard. So I'm flattening this piece of plywood. You can see it's wet. This cupped pretty badly. It was okay on that end, but it was cupped really bad on this end. So I've been wetting this side, the 
the shrunken side with water to expand it and I got these paint cans and these heavy pressure treated 2x6s sitting on them. And that is going to help straighten it out. It may not be perfect, but we're there. And we got a lot more wall in. Now I, that brace is not permanently installed. I might just leave it anyway. I gotta watch where I'm going. I've been slamming into and on one occasion broke one of those. So as you can see, it comes close to the structure, but not quite. And yeah, that one's not wedged. Actually, it's very close to wedged, but it's not quite. Yeah, you can see it better there. I don't have any wedges that small. I can make one. And no, you're not. No, I did not goof. That right there is crooked. That's because when they, uh, this thing is apparently uh, a stoop that's covering a boulder that in the older days they didn't blast, they just built around them. So, yeah, apparently the boulder started around here or so. And this wasn't enough of a, uh, wasn't enough of a uh, bulge in the rock formation to wall that little bit off. But it was over there and they just decided to cap it off. All that's gonna be cleared out. This is not part of the project, but this will ultimately be storage. This is all gonna be cleaned out. Got cupping over there that needs to be fixed. Back area, the pit is going to be fully closed off. I, I don't think, yeah, it's ridiculously tight. So this is going to go all the way to here and what the, oh. Okay, I know what that is. Yeah, there was a, there's a second antenna that's on the ceiling. In the attic, I mean. And these held the 300 ohm cable, which I don't know why you would do that. I mean, back in the 70s or so, whatever. Coax was a thing, but it wasn't as common. These are gutter pieces. This is a mess. Because of the people doing the roof, everything was done inside, so this is a total mess. That one might be leaning a little this way, but it's because as I was hammering in, as I was adjusting it, it kind of fell off, but the glue was wet. They may not be perfect. So we got that all done, we got the framing, we got the framing for the storage area back there. And you can say over there will be the entry in and out of the pit area. That's what we got for you. Well, the insulation's in, at least. This panel will dictate how this wall comes out because it seems to ebb and flow whenever I walk around. These flop around. That's gonna all get fixed at some point. Anyway, we got the insulation. Some of it didn't quite fit as nicely as other panels. Sometimes a saw had its own mind. But, can you spot this egregious, horrific, awful mistake that I made in which every professional carpenter will be laughing their ass off right now. Can we all see the mistake? All right, if you can't, Pink Panther, he's facing that way. Pink Panther, he's facing this way. Pink Panther, he's facing this way. Pink Panther. Looks like I done the goof. I'm going to be laughed out of YouTube for that. Well, it is what it is. And this board's holding it up. 
because if these are glued in, except at the bottom because of that bulge, but yeah, it's not perfect, but what is? Anyway, yeah, that's what I got. Like I said, that one's the only one that's not super snug. But we got that, we got to take care of this wall at some point, and especially that door. That's going to be the ugly looking thing until I fix it. And that frame I swore was straight, but apparently it isn't. This actually is all relatively square, surprisingly. So, like I said, we're trying to get the finished stuff done. So before it gets too cold, we can paint it. I'm hoping. So that's what we got right now. See you later. Priorities have changed. It's taking so long to do this project. And the winter's coming. We kind of switched gears, as I probably have mentioned. I haven't looked at the uh, video. We have switched from... Pretty much building the lane for the most part to trying to get all the finish work done before it gets too cold and well here's where we're at all right you got that section primed the beadboard is that na color naturally and we got the, that all primed up it's going to need a second coat of primer because it's the wood is bleeding just, just completely through it. Of course, storage will be in there. And, yeah, like I said, we got this. Ultimately, figure out a way to not bend three out of every four nails. And this section we're not going to do till we have this section I just started. This thing is a pain because... Not because it exists, but can you see them there? Maybe if I aim the camera, well, there's nails I can't get rid of. So perhaps this might just be protruding outwards ever so slightly at the top, not so much at the bottom. And including the two by, you know, the first strip there's going to be a two by six here to close off this unnecessary gap same here for this unnecessary gap so the door looks a little more normal and i'm looking where i'm going yeah that uh let me go like this you can see the door it's it still needs attention but we're getting there so we got those up and just like those walls, for some odd reason, even though these are relatively flush, there's not a lot of contact points. So the only thing I can do for a couple of days is put this stuff up, put the insulation in, maybe the crossbeam there and there, insulation. Insul in this case, it's more to reflect the heat or the coolness during the summer. Keep it in. Plus, if... And the dry lock is for that reason as well. It helps with the humidity, even though probably the bottom, probably the bottom foot of it is actually waterproofing. And I have no idea what that brown stuff was. It's, it was on that side too, but it bleeds through. I've tried getting it off. It doesn't come. It doesn't come off. And here I made a composite uh, 2x4, and there will be a partial, there'll be a partial uh, first strip here. Maybe take one of the inch and a half suckers over here. And put it there. Move this ever so slightly out of the way. I'm going to have to deal with that nail problem. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. They, there was no way of getting them out. So I tried bending them back and they bent wrong. It'll stand slightly proud at the top if I can get it to do at least something that I want. Anyway. 
remove the crap siding from there. I'm sure you noticed. So that is what we have right now. And maybe next time, maybe next time, it might be painted. Not sure. So I got the third section of wall put up. So now the side wall that goes from the en entry to the storage area to the window that's on the other side. Well, a lot of dust kicked up from maybe, you know, all the construction. Anyway, that's going to get vacuumed. So now most of the walls are ready for the paint. Although I am going to stick with just the the wall where the you know the ma quote unquote masking unit wall is because that one's fully finished and I would rather do a whole whole wall instead of what's primed uh, and then come back and finish the section on the same wall that way any differences generally aren't picked up that way anyway. There's the trim color right there, the white. And the body color where the, uh, is going to be that. I think it's going to look pretty good. And this is a high gloss, uh, interior exterior. Because it is a basement and you want to use stuff like this in the basement. So... That's what we got. Next, I believe I will show you the end result. At least in terms of one of the walls being finished. Well, started working on the wall that is the last piece that'll go. And yeah, that is a little off, but that's okay. This. We got the extra fern strips here. This we do not because of this and because of, I think I might have shown you the nails. So I want to, as I said, I'm gonna put two by six here and a two by six there. There'll be a gap and fill that in. It allows for this wire that goes to a defunct security system to stay in, in check just in case maybe if I actually go somewhere and actually want to trust the thing. Uh, it's old, the capacitors are probably garbage at this point. So no, this has not been painted. It looks terrible. That's because it was given a quick, it was given a quick primer coat. Get all the loose flaking paint off. Window will be a thing as well at some point. I am aiming that way because now you get an idea what some of the finish looks like when I turn around. And there's an idea of what it looks like, and I'm taking some photos as well, so my photo button is right here. There we go. So, I mean, it isn't perfect that the humidity is kind of kind of messed with things a little bit, like that wall bent backwards ever so slightly, it pulled that board ever so slightly out of the wall, but it's pretty decent. It's still okay. It's like I said, there is a slight difference between the wall there and the wall there. So there is a slight bow to it. You can kind of see that it's not terribly much. And in fact, you can almost not even see that That little area is the, uh, just using quarter inch cabinet grade plywood for the wall. And as I can see, it just, it just warped a little bit, but that's okay. Cause I'm going to have the door based on the shut on the, you know, on at the top. So at the bottom, it doesn't look like it's sticking out or anything. And finish. The big wall is finished. It's glossy paint for humidity. That's 
what you're supposed to actually use anyway. And that stuff that we that I bought that I was trying to buy regular glossy paint for damp basements and they decided to give me paint and primer. It may need a second coat, but it looks okay, or I might just have to touch up some spots. But that's the color. And if you are wondering why I went over the, went past the gutter and did part of the lane as well, that is so that when I get to the point of laying the hardwood floor, that if I cannot make it the exact 42 inches, which is the maximum width of a candle pin lane, 41, roughly minimum, but can get away with maybe a little less than because, hey, 16 feet, including this part. So that way, if it is a little shorter, the ends will be part of the gutter and it, it of course, will match the paint. And of course, none of these have lined up perfectly well either. The whole point is if the warp exists in the wood, it didn't quite work out on this side, is that as the ball travels, it won't hit anything. Although over here, it's not going to really matter too much because this is where the ball return is going to be. It's going to go up to about knee height, and then here will be a very small return, leaving enough room to get by. This, I'm going to try and figure out how I'm going to peg it in place. I might put some uh, concrete mounds and a pressure-treated sill down. Then screw it down and possibly removable. So yeah, that's what we got. We're trying to get all the finish, you know, all the finished paint work and anything involving paint completed so that when it gets too cold, then we can work on the structure back here because nothing and the light shut off. There it is, because nothing's been done back here at all. Ever since the uh, colder weather has been creeping up, we've been very lucky having warm, no warm November temperatures in the 70s and that. Yeah, that's, I don't think I'm going to have, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this wall. Let me take that down and... It's kind of pointless. It's just only a couple of, like, eight inches of it's a, above ground. It's kind of, point is moot, but dry lock that at some point. So, yeah, another photo for the, uh, yeah, another photo for, uh, for the Facebook crowd. So they see it from this way. And the other way and that is what we have and I said I don't think we're gonna get all of the painting done and maybe parts like the ball return that need painting or reworking this thing and that I think is gonna go away anyway uh, yeah I might get a tarp put it in the spare room the so-called living room and do some of the work there. So that's what we got. There might have to be a part four because of the way things are going, but not quite yet. See you next time. Well, typical of how this is going, it's taking much longer than expected because time and money, although the money thing has come back a little bit. But the most important thing is the time. I got money set aside to do this anyway but that being said this is what I was hoping to be the final segment but it won't be because the idea was to race against mother nature to do the finishing parts that required painting and the such and well of course that didn't come out that way it got too cold so you get this, and 
I'm not sure, I haven't looked at the segments, but I put the first coat of the so-called one coat primer paint. And it definitely needs a second coat, for sure. Can't imagine why. Although some of that might be just dust, but yeah, there, there are definitely places where it needs a second coat. So of course, oh, there's a, I think that's a, yeah, there's a spot that's a little light. But there's more of those. Oh, well, the one thing I could do, racing to the finish, ignoring, you know, the mechanicals there is, hit my head on the, at least I got the finished, you know, the finished wall on this side built, not painted, because it's, the race against nature, nature won. It's too cold to paint. Also, that came out wrong. <laughs> yeah, what I might do there is fill in the voids and put a put a design in. I mean, that came out good. That came out. This one came out okay. This mirror was so I could see on the back side. That one came out okay. This one, well, yeah. Measurements. Somehow that one wound up cockeyed. And I figured out what I was going to do with this. Is, I'm just... Because I tried to pull the nails out that are in here and I couldn't. I bent them in to try to sit them as flat as possible. And then I was going to cut some grooves so that this thing could sit flat, but there was no access for the drill to cut holes for that. So it just pretty much slides in place. And of course, now it's going to get stuck. <laughs> of course, on video it gets stuck. There we go. Yeah, so... The walls will be painted and then this thing will be painted when it, the time comes because don't want that truly getting stuck, not that it matters. Also, as I've said, the walls and the uh, the physical walls that everything's attached to weren't straight and this kind of proves it because yeah, the wires hide it a little bit, but it stands about a half inch wide to this point where this piece of wood is it's straight the brick wall actually forced the strips to bend inward so if we try to straighten out the camera and eh, maybe it hides pretty yeah you can see that it went crooked but like i said uh there's places that the uh the bricks were wider than others, like it's hard to see, but that actually leans inward like this. So I mean, not all the walls are perfectly straight. And of course, that side bends a little this way and that side bends a little that way, even though it was perfectly straight. But you know that as the wood dries out, it tends to change shape and form. So it's still pretty decent. Although, if I put the camera in here, maybe, I don't know if it's showing. Let's turn on its light. Yeah, the gap there. So, I mean, a little bit of settling. You can see the slightly cockeyed, but not too bad. With dimensional lumber, you just don't know how it's going to ultimately shape up. So, this is part three. I was hoping I could beat Mother Nature to the punch. And, well, there would have been a part four anyway, because it would be too cold to lay the floor. Because then when it gets to near 70, all the floorboards would buckle, and I don't want that. So we got to wait till it gets... The basement gets to around mid-60s before doing that. That way there's little fudge factor. So that's part three of the Cantlin Bowling Alley basement thing. So yeah, and also a ball return kind of being built. 
that's in the works. Continue that on part four. See if it even works. This is George F551 saying hope you enjoyed and have a good one. And hopefully number four is the finish line.